I'm Michael Rakowitz. We're here at the Tate Modern Level 2 Gallery, and this is an exhibition of mine called The Worst Condition is to Pass Under a Sword Which is Not One's Own. The exhibition is comprised of a lot of different materials, drawings, sculptures, video, that explore these kind of unbelievable connections between Western science fiction and fantasy and um, the design of weapons, uniforms, and monuments under the regime of Saddam Hussein in Iraq from about 1989 till 2003. I was diverted online looking at eBay and I found this uh, helmet that was uncanny, um, exactly like Darth Vader's helmet, and it turns out it was a war trophy brought back from Iraq by a U.S. soldier um, who was with the 101st Airborne Division and it turns out these were the helmets of the Fatih and Saddam, and they were the last troops uh, to stand against the United States when Baghdad fell in April of 03. And Uday Hussein was the son of Saddam who was charged with heading up this paramilitary organization. And he was an avid Star Wars fan and apparently designed the helmets and the uniforms so that they bore this resemblance to the famous Star Wars villain. But the story gets more and more complicated and complex and further embedded into the science fiction mythology when on the eve of the first Gulf War, Saddam has his troops marching underneath the Hands of Victory monument to the theme song from Star Wars. And I think what's happening in these rooms is that I'm asking questions and speculating on things that are in one way or another just kind of re-emphasizing the bizarre connections here. I mean, to think that's, that Uday Hussein who was born in 1965, which was eight years before I was born, as part of the same generation of kids that I grew up with who were watching the same movies and acting out the same scenarios in the playgrounds or in the, their parents' backyard. I think with the monument in particular, I became fascinated in art school when I was studying public art. And um, an Iraqi expat architect named Kanan Makia had written a book called The Monument. And it's a really, really interesting book. And when I saw the cover image of these two hands wielding these two swords crossed, I was immediately reminded of this one poster that I grew up with on my wall. As a kid, it was a giveaway poster from the first showings of The Empire Strikes Back. And then it turns out the illustrator, Boris Vallejo, was best friends with Rowena Morrill who was a fellow sci-fi and fantasy illustrator whose paintings were found on Saddam's walls when the palaces were invaded by the U.S. Army. And, uh, and it turns out that Bars Vallejo also wrote a critical essay in her monograph called The, the Art of Rowena. And so all these connections end up becoming a little too irresistible in a way. However loose they may be, speculative they may be, a narrative emerges. And then it's also the voice of the, the American soldier coming in as a form of journalism that is not a part of embedded journalism vis-a-vis -vis the news stations. It's when they go online on places like eBay or Flickr and they start describing what these things are. No news outlet picked up on the Darth Vader helmets. It all comes from these sort of almost provenance texts that one finds when they're being hawked online. So with these materials, I'm always trying to bring the viewer back from the drawings and then place them into this space where these real items are reinforcing the narrative that they're, they're reading in the illustrations, which are so unbelievable on many different levels. But then there are these objects and these images, these real items that underpin their occurrence as, as truth.